<laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Peace and black power, peace and black power family. Welcome to another Sarnetta TV House of Consciousness production. You see what it is. We out here in the cold, man. We out here and we right across the street from the Apollo Theater. We got Sarnetta TV awards coming up. And I have my brother Red Pill in the Blue Pill out here. And I'll pass that mic to my brother Red Pill. What's going on, brother? Peace to the God. Not much, you know, just out here doing what it do. Uh, you know, I'm out here with my brother. We just want to chop it up real quick about the awards. And um, first and foremost, give a strong, strong shout out to all of the supporters who have become investors and, you know, basically spoke with their pockets. You know what I'm saying? In order to make this dream come to reality, they see the importance in the work that you've done. And they're basically reciprocating what it is that has been done for them, AKA they left a tip at the table after they sat, after they got up after eating that meal. So salute to them, salute to your 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 staff, salute to I Empress Segment, Sapphire, Sapphire the Goddess, um, and everybody else that's working with you. You know what I mean? With the wrench next to their name and whatnot, doing the thing. All right. I'm gonna let my brother touch on it real quick. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, I I second his sentiments in regards to saying, look, this is the hallmark of Harlem right here. This is the hallmark of black excellence. You know what I'm saying? This is where black excellence comes to be celebrated, not only in the streets of Harlem, but this institution that we all know and love as the Apollo Theater. Theater. So. You know, it's a salute to everybody who uh, identified the importance of having this gathering right here in Harlem, right here on 125th, right here. Right. Salute y'all for making that happen. Uh, you know, definitely look forward for more amazing things to come as we lead up to this festive moment, this moment in history, this moment in time. Right. And I think, you know, more importantly, we have to understand that when you undertake large endeavors such as this you know what i'm saying when you attempt to put yourself on the line to turn the tide and bring excellence not only to the community to the city to the entire the, the globe the people that are looking you feel me you know that the sentinels are coming you know that the attacks are coming you know that they are coming to penetrate and distract you from the great work you understand and what we need from you sarnetta is to not be attract, distracted from the great work. You know what I'm saying? You have to put your energy, your utmost energy and your effort. You know what I'm saying? The family has to come around you so you can just do what it is that you do. This is the signature hallmark of your career as a promoter, of your career as media, as your career as someone who has brought together, you know, all of these great lights in the community. You know what I'm saying? Your career... Uh, you know, as, 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 you know what I'm saying, this being your platform and right across from the Apollo, this being where you put your 20 years in. So don't let no distractions distract you. You feel me? They're going to come, but they only exist if you give them energy. Right. You understand? Starve the demon. Starve the demon. You turn your back to them, they don't exist. They'll go elsewhere and find something else to do. In the meantime, Focus on the excellence for you, you, yourself, the legacy, and the family. Everyone needs you to be on 100%. I couldn't have said it better. So, in the summer of 2018, family, we're going to gather. We're going to come together. We're going to celebrate each other while we're still here and give each other our roses or maybe our awards. You know, and basically you know, identify the trailblazers in our community who are doing the work because they deserve to be identified on a big stage, not only for their ego or their edification or their 
you know, or adding value to what it is that they do so arduously. You know what I'm saying? My man, I appreciate you. See how that works? We out here in the streets. Brothers is coming, and they just leaving tips. That was a donation, and that wasn't even scripted. You know what I mean? Because the people appreciate what has... I can't walk through these streets. That's why I have to stand here and give my brother salutations and, you know, keep it a buck. People have been exposed to me and my brother and our mother and what we do through this platform, through this channel, through this camera, and through this brother's brand. So we are calling on those people and many others who feel the same way. I've told a story many times. You know, the brother gave me my name. I wrote a book called The Blue Pill, but him continuously referring me to that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I started wearing the name, you understand? And, and it has taken me uh, to many different heights. We showed him how to upload his first YouTube video, though. We did, we did. <laughs> so it's reciprocation. No matter what you see, we family. At the end of the day, I'm proud of my brother. I'm happy for the platform. I'm happy for all the individuals that are part of this platform. Shout out and salute to all of you. You know what I'm saying? I look forward to seeing everybody have their well-deserved moment you dig and that's what this is about the patrons the supporters the viewers the people who have been transformed that are looking for community that are looking for family that are looking for black excellence this is your moment facts and like we spoke before when we were talking about the black power awards we're gonna say the same thing for our brother and his awards as frontline and workers you there's no there's no pension for this. There's no 401k. There's no holiday ugly sweater party at the end of the year where we all get together. Like, there's no way to gauge what it is that you do. You feel me? Unless one of your contemporaries or your community come together and decide that they want to reward you. You feel me? In the near future for our children or maybe even when we become older, there's going to be compensation for the good works that, I, that we're doing for the 44 million black people in America and the other uh, 100, 200, 300 million in the diaspora who receive the information that's actually changing lives, that's actually saving lives, that's actually transforming people from their lowly knuckle dragger state to a higher state of their higher selves. They're getting to meet their higher selves and fulfill purpose, right? So anybody who's played a hand and you fulfilling your purpose, you have a duty to say, you know what? Salute. I respect you. I honor you. If I got some bread, I got some change, I'm going to throw it your way. If I have some resources, I'm going to pass it to you. If there's a door that, I'm gonna open, that I can open for you, I'm going to turn the key and open it up. That is camaraderie. That's brotherhood. That's nation building 101. We have to get into that vein. So what an award show like this can do is completely turn the tides in a better direction so you can see the importance in your brothers and sisters. We saw a few weeks ago how humongous the reach of just the community is because when two elephants clash, the grass gets hurt. It's the grass that gets hurt. So we saw, we saw not just the conscious community, we saw the reaction in black America. We saw the reaction in the black world. So that gives you an example as the scope and the reach. It's not just those two brothers, it's the scope and the reach of the community. It's a global movement. Everybody's watching, this is the new porn. They just don't wanna say that they watching. They don't wanna admit it, but they watching. So as a result of that, we got work to do, peace to the God. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of, uh, we have to stand taller than we've ever stood before. And what better way to, store, to stand tall if not standing on each other's, standing on the tallest stage, standing on the shoulders, identifying the shoulders. Because remember, there's people out here who are introduced to this information, they're introduced to these platforms, but they don't know the contributions. They don't know the history. They don't even know the names. They need a filter system. That's what the awards will help do. 
they were people that I was introduced to in Atlanta at the Black Power Wars that I never knew of. And thanks to the awards, I was introduced to them because that's a filter system. They, that made me go and research these names and find out what they're all about. So we need to do that. We don't got an answer to nobody. We are the new media. The reason why old media is in the grave is because a new energy is on the scene. And once you expose people to that real shit, they don't want the motherfucker. They don't want that other. You know what I mean? That shit is cookie cutter to them at the end of the day. So goodbye, Roland Martin. I'll see you later. No offense. I'm just saying that's old media. This is new media. Pop new media means new things can happen. Possibilities are endless. <laughs> Let me speak. There you go. Speak your speech. Because my presence here, right, on this concrete, as a contributor in what we call a quote unquote community, was directly uh, attributed to Phil Valentine. You know, demonstration. his demonstration in the year 2000, I was on the fence. I had one foot in the street and I wanted to. You know, I was flirting with the, the idea of doing something different by way of getting into more knowledge of myself. And Brother Shabazz, downtown Brooklyn, had a VHS tape with a... No, I brought the Valentine tape on Flatbush Avenue from a brother, a roster named Infinity. Infinite, right? Mm -hmm. I had got the Ashra from Shabazz. But nonetheless, I had got a, a VHS from him. You know what I'm saying? And it was X-Men Decoded. And it changed my life. I saw this brother teaching metaphysics. I had never seen that in that particular version in a long time. Um, at the time, new media, right? I had a newspaper. And the brother Black Dot was, was a writer at the newspaper. Me and him had a conversation. And we said, yo, we want to bring this information to the youth. And that began, that began what we know as the latest iteration of the metaphysical underground. So... If not for Valentine, if not for his demonstration, all right, if not for the energy that he put forth that we can identify and relate to, I don't know if we will be standing here having this version of the conversation that we're having. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we're talking about the importance of contributions. You can do things and be responsible for outcomes that you don't even have no idea about. You know what I'm saying? That's the power of these platforms. That's the power of doing the work. You know what I'm saying? The magic happens when you turn your back to it and you walk away. Like how you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So, in 2005, that's when I came to New York that time, right? When you, were, when you took your trip. I came to New York. I made it out of New York in 2003. And I, I was living in Miami. I had a job working with Pitbull, the artist, right? Before this, you know, before it became Mr. Global. And my brother gave me an SOS call to come to New York. He needed some assistance. I came to New York on my 30th birthday. I had a midlife crisis, right? I'm in Brooklyn. I'm in the P's in East New York watching... I had about a hundred DVDs. Remember the spi Remember they had the the spool, the spills, the spindles with all the mad movies and bootlegs and all of that. Uh, Hip hop DVDs. I pop in a DVD called The Anatomy of Phil Valentine. Oh. Right. On The Anatomy of Phil Valentine, I already was familiar with who Phil Valentine was already. But on The Anatomy of Phil Valentine, he tells his life story. Yeah. And on that video, he says, "I'm giving." I'm handing over the reins to my brother in Harlem by the name of Sarnetta. I need y'all to support him. I need y'all to talk. I need y'all to go and see him. I need y'all to go and find out who this man is. Like I said, I'm in New York on vacay. Right? What was the name of that? The, Anat the Anatomy of Phil Valentine. That's a classic DVD on the lecture circuit. I'd go uptown. Because I say I need to go and meet this man. I heard about him anyway because I had got a delivery in Miami of your DVDs. And at that time, that was somewhat cutting edge to have consciousness on DVDs because before that it was on VHS. So I'm like, oh, this nigga is innovative. So I come to New York. I come to Harlem. I meet Sarnetta and Dr. Jack Felder and Nova Felder that day. I make the executive decision a few days later that I ain't going back. Right? 
Because I said this on my stream the other night. I came to Harlem and fell in love with Black Harlem. Not this Harlem that we're talking about now. Although I love this Harlem, I fell in love with Black Harlem. I was on the tail end of a Harlem that will never exist again. You feel me? And I was able to feel the energy and I was able to tap into the potential and I was able to have a vision, like you said, Blue Pill, of the possibility of doing something and doing the work. And I didn't know what was going to come out of that. I just was like, yo, I'm going to hold the line with these brothers that are out here holding the line. Forget this industry shit. I'm feeling this. And henceforth, that's the beginning of this journey that I'm on right now. And thus birthed the red pill. You know what I'm saying? Because when they started calling you the blue, automatically. I, I automatically become the red. Then I do, then then on my birthday, we do a reading on my name from Dorothy Muhammad, and she breaks down Philip as being red pill. P H I red L L I P flip around his pill. So my name already had my purpose built into it, but I had to go within in order to find out who the fuck I was. So you. You are who you was before you got here, my niggas. Dig deep. You got to go mining into yourself. Dig in. Utilize life as an experience. Go into your darkest depths if need be. I, I flirted with death. We used to be on the, on the outskirts of that bitch, flirting with it. But what, it, what did it do? It gave me the kind of experiences in order to see life the way that I did. My eyes opened up because of that. I wouldn't be the person that I was if not that. We just, uh, you know, just want to say that Dr. Phil Valentine is an icon. He's not a legend. He's an icon. And, you know, he's been introduced to a majority of brothers and sisters through his, doc through, through his contribution of the documentaries 124 Hidden Colors. But that's just a snippet of what that man he was already 300 lectures in before Hidden Colors. He was already the father of what is known as the modern day conscious community before Hidden Colors. He was, him and Bobby Hemmett would be the metaphysical, the metaphysical conscious community. Let me be clear. Because we were introduced to consciousness through Sabi in the 80s. But if you understand the history on how this thing was built and how this thing formed, it was a totally, it, it was a different kind of move. But you, we're, we're putting timelines together, but we're speaking about something specifically. Metaphysical underground forming into what we know as the modern day conscious community via the multiple platforms integrated with new media. That's, that's a whole different thing from what was taking place in the uh, city college with, with the academia, with our good brothers, Dr. Ben and all of them, all of that added on to where we're at right now. This is a composite of multiple movements coming together. Salute to all of the schools of thought and knowledge and all of that. Because my mama said she used to go see Valentine in the 90s yeah. when he had the brownstone. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So she was checking his lectures back then. You feel me? Sabi told me who Valentine was. <laughs> <laughs> Before I met Valentine You know what I'm saying So I was like yo You know instead of staying away I said I needed to meet this man And that's why I came into the information And it was transformative to me At first I used to get headaches It was so much information It used to rock my, um, my, my brain You know what I mean And I had to just you know what I mean you, you, you walk away and you come back You walk away and you come back But the more and more that I would come back The more I would learn and it spoke to something in me, you know, that was relative. I needed that at that particular time because I was having an experience that I couldn't pick up a book and, and, and get the backstory for. You know what I'm saying? I was having a real-time experience that only metaphysics had the ability to speak to. So, Valentine was um, uh, very much an integral part of our transformation. And I think that he, by far, has um, contributed a lifespan of work to the global community that people have benefited from you know time memorial and there's a trifecta if we're going to get on our history lesson there's a trifecta that is responsible for this body of work and this body of work is in my humble opinion and you can ask Sarnetta because as Sarnetta comes forward as new media, he's our media and whatnot, but he's also one of the, um, you know, uh, 
disseminators of information via the library of DVD tapes and stuff that he had. So, big man, Brother Rich, Sonetta, and those who decided that they were going to push these teachers and say cool and push their doctrine onto the people, they will let you know how important the contribution of these scholars are. So the trifecta that I identify with is Dr. Delbert Blair, Bobby Hemmett, and Dr. Phil Valentine in the early 2000s. They would have won running the race. And I, I'm not excluding Ajra Kwesi. I'm not excluding any of the other master teachers that were on the scene. I'm identifying the trifectas of the brothers and sisters that were doing the lecture circuit. It's a difference. The lecture circuit in LIU and inside of metaphysical. the metaphysical underground lecture circuit. Bobby Hemmett being the occult. Uh, even Daoud. You got to put in Daoud and you also got to put in Azrael. You feel me? Azariah. So I'm saying that we have some giants amongst us. This story of the uh, history of the conscious community and how it came about has not been told. It's, it's not been told. It's not documented. It is convoluted. So that has to get straightened out. Maybe when this awards is over, we could talk about putting together a, a project where we honor and we, um, when we document the history of the Burke. contributors. Sister Burke. She got to get the mention. Clemson oh, Brown. Brown got to get his mentions. You know what I'm saying? They, they were making, doc, they were pushing documentaries. They were pushing lectures. They were pushing the narrative. All to Maddox in them. You dig what I'm saying? So uh, even with Dr. Felder and what he was doing with Harlem University, salute to all of them. You were all instrumental. You were all the DNA of this community. You are the shoulders that we stand on. Cali got to get his mention. We're going to close out. Let me ask you, Blue Pill, updated in information, current events. What's going on with Genuine? Even sitting down with the transgender, with the, um, what was he, a, um, a trans? It was a man that turned into a woman. It was a man, man that tried to turn into a woman, and he tried to kiss him. Um, yeah, they tried to hit my dude with the whammy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm shit. You know what I mean? They tried to put him in the middle of a tuna sandwich. Um, and he wasn't with it. You know what I'm saying? Let's be clear. Um, there's been a lot of different conversations taking place. But as I said last night, right? So let's go back into the whole Bible talk. Because the majority of the people out here are Christians. They say what differentiates you from the animal kingdom is you have divine will and choice, right? A shield called will and a spoil called choice. That's what divides you. That's what makes you greater than the animal, right? So what point in society do we get to where a man cannot exercise his choice? A choice is his preference. The man said, look, I don't have a preference for other men or other men disguising themselves as women. Or for a society that tells me, because a man puts a wig on, I have to acknowledge that he's a woman. You know what I'm saying? And we're not having enough of a conversation about, well, what exactly is a woman? You understand? If a man can cut his phallus off, is a woman only uh, uh, designated by having a, 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 a vagina? A, a yoni? You know what I'm saying? Is it not dealing with chromosomes? Is it not dealing with... All of, you know, all of these other genetics that are an integral part of who she is. But we're saying on the surface, society tells you this is how you're supposed to identify a person. Identification is one thing. Acquiescing with advances is a whole nother thing. So what happened is that the brother got hit on. You understand? He got hit on and he got put in a compromising position, right? That one can step by and say, yo... That was lightweight sexual abuse. That wasn't lightweight sexual yes. abuse. Let's 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 just let's just be political. Let's say, hey, that's lightweight harassment and sexual abuse, right? Because you are trying to put something on someone, right? By force that they're not with. And when they say I'm not with it, then you want to shame them. Then you want to shame them. So it's the very thing that they called on us to fight for for women. Right? 
But now the conversation is getting all muddy because you're throwing everyone into this conversation. So we got a front line and cape for transvestites as well. A transvestite, what are the rules of engagement with transvestites? You know what I'm saying? What are the rules of engagement for transvestites in regards to how it is that they, um, you know, Okay, going on? Create uh, lines of engagement with other members of different sexes. You know what I'm saying? So, this person is just, it's okay for them to shoot a harpoon at him. He ducks the harpoon, and now people are saying, How could you duck the harpoon? You're so wrong to duck the harpoon. Right. Nigga, I ain't know that I was coming outside to get fucking whaled by a harpoon. You dig? Have we ever taken into account that this man might be in a relationship with a woman, that he might have family, or he might, you know, have his fan base, that he's like, look, this is not going to work well, this is not going to go over with my wife at home, or my children that are watching, or my fan base of women that come to my shows and throw their pants, or the black community, or black Twitter, because you never know which way it's going to go with them. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Big up to Genuine, right? For, for yeah, he wanted to ride a pony for living in his truth. He's living in his truth. The question is, yes, is the motherfucker sitting next to him living in theirs? That's what I'm saying. So the conversation turns to, what is your truth? Black man and black woman, are you telling me that you're going to try to chastise this man for living in his truth. His truth is that he's a heterosexual. So that cancels out any... I don't even want... I, right, and they hetero shaming. They hetero shaming out here. Out here. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, his truth is he what he said it is. I'm not trying to engage. I'm not going to entertain I am not going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to lead you on. Right. What's the difference from an IG model curbing somebody, sliding in her DM, you know what I'm saying? You have every right to tell this man what your preference is and what it isn't, right? I ain't into bum ass niggas. I'm not into whole tempers. I'm not into this. I'm not into that. You have so many things that you're not into, you know what I'm saying? But this man didn't even go to those lengths. He just simply was like, nah, I'm cool on that. He curbed him. And then we're going to shame him. You know what I mean? This is a crazy predicament. This place that we're at in this world needs a thorough review. You dig what I'm saying? And we need to keep our eyes open. <laughs> because like I said, I don't know what long nap that I woke up from when the whole shit has flipped topsy-turvy and there's a whole nother conversation taking place that we're not privy to because I couldn't even stand what the talking points was you know what I mean? no doubt so yeah um, everything the blue said you know what I mean? everything the blue said like I, the fact that we're having this conversation in 2018 is surprising to me the hypocrisy and the fact that Oprah Winfrey just riled up all of your emotions with her Golden Golden Globes award speech where she said, the time is up. We're coming for you. Me too. But the next day, you have a glorious Me Too moment with the opposite sex. Was it because she didn't identify black men as being sexual abused victims? Or she didn't speak to the plight of all of the men who've been raped by the Catholic Church when she was up there doing her glorious campaign speech about people who were abused, that the next day when you saw a man get sexually uh, 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 um, har propositioned and harassed by a transgender, that you didn't see that you didn't see that that was happening, you didn't notice that that was a Me Too moment. So you want to shame Genuine for not acquiescing and basically compromising his preference he's not a out he didn't come out if he was in the closet i don't know he's not a out of the closet man to say yo i'm with everything i'm a trisexual i try it all he said nah you know what i mean he said maybe i got baby hair but i ain't with it you know what i mean and 
It was a white tranny too. Right. Like <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> he did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so that's dang like what are your children? What are they saying to your children in a subliminal way? Remember, the devil works through suggestion. And subliminal suggestion that is. What are they saying to the babies now? By even making this a, a issue, they're like, yo, this is the way that we, if a tranny wants to kiss you, you're supposed to kiss them. Right. So all of you people on Twitter, all of you people that are pro that, are you mean to tell me that it already went down with you? You already got, you know what I'm saying? You already got pushed up on by a tranny and you, you folded? Well, let me say this though. I, I give them a strike one though. I'm still giving Genuine a strike one for even being in that position because he knew he was a man. He leaned up on him and all that and they put the cover on him until a chump tried to kiss him and that's when he backed up. But why would you even put yourself in that position to lay up with this fuck crazy? Like where's your repelling at? You know what I'm saying? It ain't no big, yeah, we can't, my thing is this. You know why? This is no, no. You know why? Let me, I'm not. You're not pulling on your. You know no. why? Because maybe the trainee felt that you leading him on, uh -huh. so you lean on his chest, like, all right, let me hug you, and then when the trainee wanted to kiss, you said, oh no, no, you leading him on. You shouldn't even put yourself in that position. Okay, nah, Man. you got a point. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what what premise the engagement was under. Um. But, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's just muddy waters at this particular point in time. You feel me? Like, does a transsexual supposed to, like, introduce themselves as that? Or are you saying it's okay to be duped in society? You know what I'm saying? Are we at that place when what we stand on is knowledge itself? A man supposed to get to know themselves. Women supposed to get to know who they are. You know, the the persons that you're engaging with, I think that you have every right to know who you're engaging with. Right. You know what I mean? What and and the relationship's supposed to... Flip it. Yeah. What if that was genuine trying to kiss a white woman on a job on the screen? What would they say? If, if old grandmother, too. He would be... He would, he, would, he, would, he would be part of the Me Too campaign. Right. All right? And he would be... Yeah, he would be out of a career because they would hashtag Me Too him. Yeah, you understand? They and they would light his ass up all over social media and he would lose shows, he would lose sponsorships, you know what I'm saying? And he would lose all sorts of resources and probably, I don't know, you know what I mean? So if the other way was around, yes, they would be tan his ass up, alright? They would be throwing him in the pot with Russell Simmons. So for everybody that likes to erroneously uh, marry the quote unquote LBGT struggle with civil rights it has no no bearing whatsoever between the two. Heterosexual men need to have the conversation about getting legislation put forth to say, yo, it should be a federal hate crime to dupe us. If you want to talk about it like that, there should be a federal crime to dupe heterosexual men if you're a transsexual that's you need to identify because that's 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 sexual assault that and it could cause cool. mental damage right that's undoable yeah right a nigga will need to be in the jungles of ecuador taking ayahuasca yeah. for three months out, you, you know what i'm saying for the fucking for the for the <laughs> what about oprah winfrey speaks did y'all hear the speech do y'all like the speech nah i'm oh, good i heard it you know what I'm saying? But my thing with Oprah is this. this. This speech was so ambiguous. What happened to the young men that have been molested? What happened to the... They Let said me, that Oprah... Hold on. They said there's reports of Oprah being a madam in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Meaning that she's taking younger women to Harvey Weinstein. Why don't you talk about, so you mean to tell let me, me let that me with the power of Twitter and the power of your words, I'm not talking about the speech, so because all of these pictures are surfacing with her and Trump and her and Weinstein throughout history. So you mean to tell me you sat back for a whole year with whatever, with your, when your buddy Donald Trump was completely tearing his country apart, right? You didn't have anything to say on Twitter then. But now you come in with it because, as you can see, after the speech, it's the same thing that a Barack Obama did when they propped him up 
at the DNC speech to become the next presidential candidate. Oprah Winfrey, you are not president material, and that's no slight on her whatsoever. You're a billionaire. You should get into philanthropy. Not I, I respect what you're doing with the 500 scholarships and the, the all-girls school. You're a billionaire, though. There's a lot of work that could be done in Chicago and other places. You're a philanthropist. Let's talk about the future. There's a tech boom. There's all kind of stuff going on. Um, you know, all of these new economies, cryptocurrency. Why don't we have that talk with let's billionaires? Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Right? Hollywood is the bastion of the democratic fundraising machine. Fact. All right? So for all of Barack Obama's campaign, for all of through Hillary's campaign, you had to come to Hollywood. You had to see Harvey Weinstein see Harvey. to get the bag. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking about potentially Secret Service had to know, right? FBI had to know because you got to do background clearances. You can't take the POTUS, the President of the United States, and put them right in these environments, especially dealing with money and fundraising, and you don't know everything that's going down with these people who are responsible for the fundraising. So o Oprah's part of that circle. You know what I'm saying? These are her friends. Not only by way of celebrity, we're talking about in the philanthropic aspects and fundraising, right? She's yeah. part of that boys club. She's part of it. You knew all along. You've always known. Everybody knew. Right? Everybody, Everybody knew. So, don't get up there so but now it's political. Now it's the opportunity to have a spin. Because we have to be very clear. There is a divine feminine energy that has hit this planet. Right? About 2016. You know what I'm saying? And we definitely saw what it did last year, right? We saw all of that divine feminine energy coming after the solar eclipse manifesting itself by way of all of these natural occurrences, these these weather um, patterns and things of that nature. You feel me? But the movement has legs. It don't have a head because Hillary didn't make it in. So they have to install a Godhead onto the movement because the movement has legs it don't have a head so i understand the political maneuvering that's taking place right now Facts. but please family don't fall for that shit it's politics man Facts. she knew all along Hillary, she knew was she gonna throw michelle as a running mate and y'all gonna lose it huh. y'all gonna lose their minds yeah. they're gonna take it by a landslide chance the rapper has a running mate i mean We've just become so shallow as a people to where as the cult of personality has overtaken everything. You know what I mean? And you're not looking for true politicians anymore. And to be honest with you, a true politician, you know, politics. Like, there's not, there's really, I'm not looking for anything in a politician at the end of the day. I haven't done it before. I haven't, unless... These are politicians that you're buying for their lobbying power unless you understand how politics truly works and you're going to control them through your pocketbook, not for the simple fact that she's black and she's a woman and she knows our plight and she used to be a natural head. No, that's not, that's not what's going to take you out of the position that you're in right now, black America. It's not going to solve the problem. So I'm not buying into it. If y'all want to go ahead and get put under a new spell, you're right for that. That's that's all our people do. We want that feel goodism. We want dopamines to be released. We want t-shirts. I'm gonna sell the t-shirt. Please believe that. I'll get the bread. But no, I'm not buying into it. She's not a politician. I've never seen anything truly political come from her, other than like Blue Pill said, the posturing that takes place with these elitists that are in bed with media, the charities, and all kind of other bull. It's not real to me. So. Like I said, if you're not talking about black men's plight along with black women's plight, and you said the time is up for men, what about white men? Why don't you talk about the power structure? The fuck is you talking about? Like, don't throw us all under the bus. You need to identify, say some names. You know what I mean? Don't just throw all men under the bus and then you create more of a gender gap. Because there's a gender war taking place. You just feeding fuel to that shit. You're not necessarily saying the white power structure. So, yeah, miss me with that, Harpo. Yeah. <laughs> she gonna have all these little boys want to clip their wiener just to feel safe. Damn. You understand? 
We gotta cut this shit out. You dig? Alright. So yeah, peace, love, and light, y'all. Um, you know, we look forward to uh the awards. Alright. And seeing all of the beautiful people in the building. Summer New York, Harlem, USA. Peace. Alright. Peace.